Hi guys! So, today I'm going to answer a question that I get asked quite a lot, which is how do I set up my iGyros in my power boxes? Now, even though I'm going to be showing you on a Mercury SRS, the principle is the same for all PowerBox iGyros. The software is basically the same regardless of whether you have the Mercury, the Royal, or even the iGyro itself. Now, I'm going to show you two ways. Firstly, we're going to do it the proper way, using the software included in the box itself. So the setup assistant and then the flight assistant. After that, I'm also going to show you how to do it manually, if you wanted to do it step by step, or more importantly, if you want to simply fine tune those settings that you've done in the flight assistant previously. So let's take a look at how we do it, uh, step by step, so it should be quite easy to follow. And then if you have any questions or queries, by all means, drop a line in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer anything. And if necessary, even make another video to explain further. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe as there are going to be a lot more videos like this on the way. Unit on. We go into the menu. We ignore everything on the first screen. And go into Setup Assistant. This will reset the gyro and most of the power box as well. So beware of doing this if it's some simply a minor adjustment that you want to make, as it will reset everything. If you want to just do a, a fine tune or tweak, do it manually in each one of the settings, which we'll show you in following videos. So caution reset, are you sure? Yes. Set aircraft type. Here we can choose a normal wing, delta wing, V-tail, or any different type of model. In my case, we're going to use a normal wing. Flight mode switch to teach channel. Okay, so we've set up in the transmitter one channel, which is controlled by a three-way switch, which is going to turn the gyro off, on, or on. So if we simply flip that, it detects it automatically as channel seven, and you can see it flipping through flight mode one, two, and three as we go through the sequence. Move slider or knob to teach gain channel. So we've also assigned a channel on the transmitter for the gain on the gyro. So as we move that, it also automatically detects what channel that is, channel eight. Set flight mode configuration. Now I would recommend not touching this unless you really know what you're doing. Flight mode one should always be gyro off, as you always need to be able to turn the gyro off in case something goes wrong. Flight mode two is attitude assist standard, so in other words, only on elevator and aileron. And flight mode three is attitude assist all, which is all three axes. Attitude assist being heading hold on the gyro. So that looks okay to me, we'll leave that as it is. Move aileron stick to teach channel. Okay, so as we move the aileron stick, as you can see, it has detected channels one and six for aileron A and B, which are correct. Those are the two channels which I have in my transmitter, and it's automatically assigned them to outputs A and M. We can change those later on if we so wish. Okay, do the same for the elevator, move the elevator stick. Now, as I only have one channel in my transmitter acting as elevator, it has put both elevators down as channel two on outputs D and J. Again, we can change those at a later date. Same again for rudder. Again, I have just the one channel, so both, channel, both rudders are showing as channel four. Flap, I'm not going to use flap, so I just ignore that completely. Throttle, let me just move the throttle. 
channel 3, correct? Set to output B. You don't need to remember these, you can check on them and look at them later. And modify them as well, of course. Now, for the gyro, it's important that the gyro knows which way the unit is facing so it knows which of the axis is being moved intentionally or unintentionally. So it asks us to tilt the tail up or down and then keep steady. So we're just going to lift that up, like so. It's now moved on to the next channel, which asks us to swing the tail left or right. So in doing that, keep it steady. Mounting orientation has been detected. Okay, so it now knows that in my case, that is going to be forwards and that is rudder with this would be ailerons. If it was the other way around, you would simply lift the power box in a different direction. As you can see now, as I move, it's testing the gyro. Now, why is it doing that? It's because the next option in the menu is it's asking us to check or particularly set the gyro direction. What is the gyro direction? Basically, additionally to you having to reverse or not the servos uh, to have the plane respond in the correct manner, i.e. up being up and left being left, we need to do the same for the gyro. The gyro needs to be verified to make sure that upon trying to correct in a particular direction that it is actually correcting in that direction that is needed as opposed to in reverse. So what the gyro has done now, what the power box has done now, sorry, is it has turned up all the gyro settings to the max so that with very little movement on the plane, i.e. the power box, we can have a, a very large movement on the servo to see which way it is responding. So if I'm lifting that, you can see the servo moving left. If that was in the wrong direction, we would go down to, in this case, this was aileron B, and we simply reverse it. So now when I lift it, it goes to the right instead of to the left. Now, when setting up a gyro, when you move a particular surface in a direction that will always be this direction that the surface should actually move to as well. In other words, if you lift the wing, the aileron should lift as gyro correction. If you lift the elevator, the elevator should go up. And if you move the rudder or the fuselage to the left, the rudder should move to the left as well. So at the moment, if I'm lift, lifting this to the right, the servo is going to the right. That would be pretty much exactly what we wanted. Okay, so we would check all of those channels. We would set again for the same for the rudder, as they don't all fit on the same screen, but it's a continuation of the same one. And once we're happy with that, it now tells us that the basic setup assistant has now been completed. The next step would be test fly assistant. The test fly assistant being exactly what it says on the tin, the assistant that you will use to set up the gyro in flight. Okay, so we've seen how to set up the gyro using the wizard. It's now time to take our plane to the flying field and actually put it in the air and do some real tests with some real gyro. Okay, so we go into the menu. We're going to skip all the first page and go to test fly assistant. Caution, reset. This is going to reset all the gyro settings, gyro gain settings that you had previously. In other words, this is not to fine tune what you already have. This is to start from zero. This will have zero gain on every channel, and then you will set it up in flight. Ideal for a first test, or if you simply want to start afresh. So, do we want to reset? Yes. B 
Be aware that this does not modify any of the main settings that we did in the previous menu. In other words, it's not going to affect which direction the gyro corrects in, what channels are affected, or anything like that. So we say yes. Plane is zeroing, keep still. What that's doing is it's checking where the, where the gyro is and where the servos are and the trims and sub-trims and everything else. Trying to learn what zero is, what straight and level is. From that point on, anything away from there is unintentional or unintended and therefore unwanted. And the gyro will work to correct it. It now asks us to move all sticks to teach end positions. Why does it do this? This is basically to prevent overstressing the servos. In other words, if your elevator moves to 45 degrees, when you move your servo on your elevator, it will move to those 45 degrees. What this screen is doing is the power box is learning that the servo should not go beyond that point because it could potentially cause damage to the servo, the linkage, or the elevator, or the surface itself. So basically, no matter what gyro input is needed, the gyro will never go beyond that point. Okay, so we move all sticks, elevator, aileron, and rudder, and then press OK. It now asks us to set flight mode switch to FM2 and gain slider or knob to zero. So we need to have the gyro gain slider set to zero. So zero gain, starting off at zero, always a good idea. <laughs> and then once we're ready to go and in flight, we will set the flight mode switch to FM2 like so. In doing so, it's now asking us to increase the gain slowly. So once in flight, we will slowly increase the gain on our gain slider until such a point as when the model starts vibrating or oscillating in any one of its axes. What this means is if the plane starts Doing this, you have too much gain, be that on aileron, elevator, or rudder. So basically, you want to increase the gain until such a point as when it starts doing that ever so slightly, and then take it back a notch or two. Then fly around for a couple of laps at increasing speed to make sure that at no matter what speed you're flying at, the gain that you have set is correct. In other words, you don't want to find that you've set it at half speed, which is where you would normally start setting it, and that at full speed it starts oscillating. That's no good. That's because you have too high a gain. So we need to go back and just notch it back ever so slightly, as we have done here. Once we're happy with how that feels, we'll simply hit that flight mode switch back to flight mode one, so gyro off, and it congratulates us for gyro setup completed. Have fun. Okay, so we've now set up all the basics of the gyro, and that has in a single step set up gyro gain on aileron, elevator, and rudder. We can now exit this and continue flying and having fun. Now that doesn't mean that you may or may not benefit from some fine tuning of your gyro gains, uh, as that has done all three of the axes in a single step. So you may have reached uh, the oscillation on aileron's, but be a long way from it on elevator. So whichever direction your oscillation was on, make a note of it and that channel that axis leave it as it is because you now know that any higher than that it will oscillate however as you have three flight modes flight mode one two 
and 3. You can leave flight mode 2 as you've just set up with the gain uh, done via the wizard and manually go back into the menu and in gyro settings if you so wished say okay ailerons we know are correct in flight mode 2 10% is perfect however on elevator it didn't start oscillating on elevator so we change axis to elevator and we have 10% gain so we may now decide okay I want to try a little bit higher gain but not on FM2 FM2 is my safe go-to gyro we've tried that we know it works let's try FM3 flight mode 3 that gain I'm going to increase it a little bit say to 15% and then in the next flight, you'll simply, you can start with gyro off or gyro on in FM2, which you've already tested, is already safe, and you've already tried it. And then cautiously try FM3. As you now have 5% more gain on the elevator, and it could be of interest to see if it oscillates or not. If it doesn't oscillate, chances are you'll prefer how it feels plane may feel a little bit more locked in and less affected by outside influences or if it starts oscillating knock it back to where it was because basically that was already an ideal setting and you can continue playing with these flight in flight out small amounts of the time being very careful when you do so uh, just to be able to have your finger on that switch to turn the gyro back to your safe FM2 mode if at any point the model starts oscillating. And there you have it. You have your iGyro perfectly set up to do anything that you want or need. Have fun, happy flying. Okay guys, I hope that you found that helpful. Good luck programming your new Powerbox iGyros, be it your Mercury, Royal, or iGyro itself. Happy flying, and if you found this video useful, Remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell to keep receiving notifications when new videos are uploaded. I'm going to make it really easy for you. I'm going to put here a ball so you can subscribe. Why not check out one of my other videos right here as well. Happy flying!